Well, that didn't go as planned. this evening walking some wheat stubble. Uh, it's been a month, five weeks, something like that since we cut the wheat off of here. Uh, about two weeks after the wheat was done, uh, I come out and I planted a cover crop. I sprayed the field off uh, with Liberty to kill the volunteer wheat that was trying to come up and then I I uh, come out here and I planted a cover mix of soybeans and radish seed. So about three weeks ago. You can see the crop, the cover crop coming in. So right here, soybeans. Uh, let me see if I can find a radish. Some places the radishes are really heavy and in other places they aren't. I didn't do a fantastic job of blending them. Here's radishes right here. You can see these ones with the kind of almost heart-shaped leaf. Those are the radishes. I didn't do a great job blending them. I filled the drill with soybeans and then dumped the radish seed on top, kind of hoping that it would mix in as I went down the road because the radish seed is quite small, uh, smaller than a BB and a soybean. If you don't know the size of a soybean, it would be like a like a pea, about that size. Uh, so there's lots of spaces in between round soybeans. Uh, I thought the radishes would kind of shake down through better. And they did and eventually. I mean, this through here has a lot of both. There's soybean and radish and radish, soybean. Uh, but starting out the field, it was all soybeans. But no big deal. I mean, the soybeans that make a good cover in and of themselves. So one of the reasons that I chose soybeans as the cover crop uh, for this wheat stubble is uh, a couple of reasons, I guess. One is just to get a heavy, heavy crop on there to help control weeds. Um, and I planted them heavy. I planted the soybeans at like 400,000 seeds per acre, uh, which normal, a normal crop you'd plant between 100 and, uh, 140 and 200,000 maybe. So I planted them pretty heavy so that they cover the ground fast. But another reason is nitrogen fixation. So soybeans have a synergistic relationship with certain bacteria in the soil. Uh, and the soybeans work with the bacteria so that the bacteria pulls nitrogen out of the atmosphere. If you remember from high school science class, the air we breathe is like 70% nitrogen. So the bacteria in the soil are pulling nitrogen out of the air and converting it into a form of nitrogen that plants can uptake. And soybeans support that bacteria on their roots. So the soybean takes that nitrogen in. Uh, and then when the plant dies, uh, that nitrogen will still be there for uh, next year's corn crop as well as the wheat stubble that is trying to decay out here will use nitrogen uh, to break down because you have to, let me see if I get this right, wheat stubble is high in car carbon, uh, you have to get the carbon to nitrogen ratio somewhat equal for the stubble to break down. So the soybeans should help build the nitrogen in the soil and help the wheat stubble to decay faster um, which is kind of what we need because if it doesn't decay well then you have a heavy mat of straw in the spring that's difficult to plant through unless you work the ground and and I don't really want to do that so this is my solution so it means should bring in the nitrogen that should help equalize the carbon to nitrogen ratio and help the straw to break down faster. Now the radishes that I planted in here, 
they are beneficial in a few ways. Number one, the number one reason probably any farmer plants radishes really is because they put down a really deep root that helps to break up compaction uh, caused by too much water, caused by heavy equipment, whatever various things that can cause compaction. Uh, the radish puts down a large deep root that breaks that pan up and also the deep root goes down and grabs any nutrients that might have leached below the normal root depth of other crops and it brings those nutrients back up to the surface so it's they call it a trap crop because it's trapping the, the nutrients that are down low and bringing them back up to the top to save them, salvage them so I want to check out my earthworm population out here. Um, one way that you can help determine if your soil is healthy is by how many earthworms and how big of earthworms you have. Uh, because earthworms eat the fungus and bacteria that live in the soil. And fungus and bacteria are good. Uh, certain bacteria and fungus are anyway. There are some that are bad, but for the most part they're good for helping improve uh, your crop's ability to take up nutrients. And because the earthworms eat them, a way to tell if you have those um, micro that microbial activity is by seeing how many earthworms you have and how big they are. Because the bigger an earthworm is, the healthier it is. So I'm going to dig a few shovelfuls and see if we find any earthworms. And we might not because it's pretty dry right now, but Oh, I'm there. Try again, shall we? One. Up here. I can't hold the camera and point at it at the same time. Somewhere up in there. There, you see him? That little guy moving around. He's working. Breaking apart the soil. Breaking down the nutrients so that they're readily available for the plants. Doing what the little guys are supposed to be doing. So that's what we're looking for in healthy soil, is living soil. That's what we want. We want soil that's alive all year long with microbes, with plants. Soil that's dead doesn't feed the next year's crop. So we don't want dead soil. That's why we plant cover crops. That's why we use inoculants to help promote the fungus. That's why we no-till. I found an earthworm in my third shovel full. Uh, I think I cut him in half with the shovel. He's just a little guy. So, I'll keep looking. Oh, there's another one. That's good. Maybe that's the other half of the same one, but he'd be a bit long for that. Go back to work, guys. Sorry to disturb you. I wasn't finding a lot of worms in the wheat stubble, so I came over here into the soybean field. And my first shovel full, I found a worm. And you look at this soil, and you see all these holes? That's all from worm activity, so that's, that's really good. That's really desirable, because that means they're moving up and down through the soil. And them pores in the soil, them holes, when it does rain, they'll allow water to move down into the root zone and really help the plants out and keep the water from running off the field. So that's definitely what we want. And this is soybeans on soybean stubble, which is generally not desirable, but even in here it looks pretty good. Okay, so I told you when we were talking about the soybeans as a cover crop over there, how I'm looking for it to fix nitrogen, and I wanted to show you, if you look this is the root mass of a soybean plant, a, f a full one that was planted this spring. If you look here on the roots, you see all of these white nodules, little white, off-white balls that are on here. Look at all of them. Those are nitrogen nodules. 
that's what the bacteria has fixed to the plant's roots so that the plant can then pull that nitrogen in and use it for growth and pod production. And there's quite a few pods on this plant. So there you go, There, there's what I'm talking about. Can anyone tell me what this tree looking weed is? Those big piney seed pods on it. Thank you for tuning in to the Z Farm. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like and subscribe. And, you know, share it with a friend. Maybe send some money this way. Whatever you feel is appropriate. This is Jeremy. Keep it green.